Hello, my name is Yannis Dizoglu, and in this video tutorial I'm going to talk about data versus information. What's the difference between data and information? Here's the difference. I'm just going to give you an example, first of all, and then I will discuss this in more detail. Google is a search engine, and as a search engine, behind it, there's a massive database. What's a database? A base, basically, that stores data. Like you have army base, where you're storing weapons, soldiers, etc., etc. You have a, ba a base for data, and that's what we call database. So behind Google, there's a massive database. But this, de de this data is absolutely useless to us, unless we use something we call queries to extract this particular amount of data and convert this particular amount of data into meaningful information. Here's an example. If I type the term dog here, out of the whole data that's stored within Google, in 0.77 seconds, I've managed to extract three over three and a half billion records, over three and a half different websites. So if I scroll down, I will be able to actually see a number of different structures here. But here's the main structure of how the data is converted into meaningful information. I've got information about this web from this website, Doc, uh, Docs Trust. So if I go through, I can actually read more information about these dogs here. So by actually creating a query, I extracted this data. And this data now is useful information. I could actually click here to expand this useful information even further. So by actually seeing more details. So if I want to see more details about Chunk here, I will be able to actually click on it and I will be able to actually see this information here. So all this because of the data. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to select view page source. This is basically the information that I've extracted by creating the queries. So this information is very useful, but this is a query. And the information from the query, it does make sense, but it doesn't is not being displayed in a user-friendly manner. So from data, I create a query. From the query, I convert the data into useful information. Now, from this useful information that I have created, I need to create something we call reports. And the report basically displays the data in a professional manner. So if I go here, so this is the query results, but this is the report. So the report displays the data in a professional manner. So this page and this page are exactly the same pages. One shows the query results and one so shows the report view. So this is the query view, and this is the report view. So queries are not very straightforward for us to understand. However, reports are always attractive and easy to follow and understand. So what we have just covered, based on this example, is we use we need data. Without data, we cannot convert, we, we cannot actually receive useful information. For the data to be exist to exist, we have to store this data somewhere. And where we're storing the data, the location we store the data, we call it database. Once the data is stored, then we create in something we call queries. So when we actually create the query, then the query will display the results to us based on the query format. Once the query format display the results, if we would like to make sure that we display the results in a user-friendly manner, we need to create a professional and an attractive report. So this is a report. So hopefully now things make more sense to you. So from data to a query and from a query to a report. Based on the report, and based on the query results, we will be able to make decisions. So, 
Having explained all this now, on the description below, you will have this Microsoft Access database. This Microsoft Access database has a number of different tables. I'm just going to rename the tables a bit. So I'm just going to close that to give nice and clear names here. So I'm going to right click, select rename, and I'm just going to put the term TBL before. Press the enter key. So I'm going to rename that. I'm going to put a TBL before that. And I'm going, oops, and I'm going to rename this. And that's how you rename in tables in Microsoft Access. TBL stock. OK. So in this database, I've got three different tables, TBL customer, TBL order, and TBL stock. If I go to the database tools, I will be able to see the relationships between these tables. I'm going to right click here. I'm going to select show tables. So I'm going to double click on the customer, on the order and on the stock. OK. As you can see, the relationships already exist. And these relationships are based on one to many relationship. So one customer can have many orders. So this is what we call a foreign key. So this is the primary key and this is the foreign key. The foreign key, we call it foreign because the customer doesn't belong to this order table. This, therefore, this customer is a foreigner here. The main location where this customer ID belongs to is on the customer table. And that's why it's a primary key. Here we have another one-to-many relationship. So one stock can be placed in the set, you know, in many orders. So the stock here is the primary key, and because the stock doesn't belong to the orders table, only belongs to the TBL stock table, this means that this stock is called is a foreign key, because the foreigner is not is not it doesn't belong onto this table. Like myself, I don't belong to UK. I belong to Greece. So in UK, I'm a foreigner. All right. So I'm going to close this now. This is the relationship window. Now let's click yes. You don't have to touch that. So this database is already created for you. So what we'll need to do now, we have here, if we double click here, we have some data here. All right. So this data now, we need to convert this data into meaningful information. Because here, these orders means nothing to the human eye. But these orders at the same time means quite a lot. This data, if we look closer, order ID 7. So if I go to the order ID 7, okay, I've got the customer ID 1. Now, I don't know who is the customer ID 1. I need to double click on the customer and find out who is the customer ID number 1. And it's David White. Then I'm going to go back to the orders table, and then the quantity is 3. But the quantity of 3 means nothing to me, because I don't know what the stock 1 is. So 3 of 1, what this 1 represents? If I go to the stock table, and I go to the ID, stock ID 1, I can now see that ID, stock ID 1 is strawberry delights. So why... We need to store data like this and not just like this. The answer is simple. Speed and storage. A customer can place many orders and a product can be pl placed within, within many transactions, within ma many orders. A, a company might have billion transactions every single year. Therefore, this data will be quite a lot. If we keep storing this data over and over again, we have quite a few characters there that we can actually refer to these characters by actually referring to the ID. But it's too time consuming if we do this manually. And this is why we need to create queries. Queries will allow us to extract the data from the database and basically enable us to actually see the labels of these IDs 
to make it easier for us to understand. Here's an example of the first query we need to create. If I go to my PowerPoint presentation or on the second slide, how to convert data into meaningful information. How much stock is now out of date, which needs safely disposing, disposing of and sorting in descending order. So in order for me to do this, I need to basically identify the tables that I need to use. And the table I need to use is a stock table. And the query criteria is the, is the out of date uh, stock. So I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go back to my database. I'm going to go to create. Then I'm going to select create query design. Now I'm on, on the right hand side, I can see my tables. If you cannot see your tables because this window is closed, you can always right click and select show table. Okay. Now what I will need is the stock table. So I can click and drag the stock table here or let's hide this, remove the table. I can double click it to basically display this table here. Then what I need to do is double click the stock ID, the stock name, double click the volume, double click the quantity, double click the best before date and double click the cost per unit. So again, my query is all about finding out which stock basically has expired. So the best before date I'm looking for. And here we have the criteria section. The criteria section is the section below the actual checkbox. So this is where I will create my query argument. So this I'm going to put less than now. And I'm going to press, oops. And then I'm going to press the enter key on my keyboard. And I'm just going to put open close parentheses. Okay. So less than now open and close parentheses. Now the less than now referring to the current date and time of your computer, which means that anything that is less than the current date means that it has expired. If I click on the wrong query, now I can actually see which products have actually expired and are still in stock. Therefore, I can send somebody in the warehouse to basically dis remove this from the premises before these products were used, are used on ice cream in this case, and basically people will get food poison. So this is how you, we create the first query. So I'm just going to click save file and select save. Now to save the queries, we always use the abbreviation QRY. Then we follow by the name of the query. So best before date, BBD, expired. I'm just going to click OK. So my first query now has been created. So if in the future, let's close this query. If in the future, another product has actually expired. So if I go to the stock table and let's say, for instance, we're going to change this date here, date, uh, date here from 2022 to uh, 2020, which is the 1st of, the, of February and is already past this date. And I'm just going to change this as well to 2020. This is September. Okay. And I close this table. So next time somebody clicks on uh, double clicks to run the query, the query is already set for me. So therefore I will be able to actually see the new products. So if I delete these products now, I'm going to highlight these products. I'm going to right click. Oops. I'm going to, I'm going to highlight them all. Right click. Oops. Okay. I just need to delete one by one manually. Okay. So I can right click on its record. Yes. And delete its record here. Okay. So not only I remove them from the system, from uh, the premises, but I remove them from the system as well. Okay. So if I close this query now and I go back to the stock table, as you can see, these products were removed from here as well. This is because the relationships between the tables.
So if I actually change this date now to 2020, so this product has expired, I'm just going to close this now and double click here on the query. As you can see here now, oops, it's not doing, let's have a look. Ah, because it's the December. All right. So if we say 10th, okay, October. So let's close this. Let's double click this. And as you can see now, this product shows. Okay, now I have created my first query and I know it works. What I need to do, I need to create uh, another query. The next query I need to create is to find out how many customers live in a particular postcode. So the postcode is IO12. So if I go now to my database and go to the TBL customers, I will be able to see very quickly and easily that I've got two customers here, three customers here, with a uh, beginning their postcode begins with IO12. However, if we have one million customers, it's very difficult for us to actually identify this. So how do we extract this particular information? By creating another query. Let's go to create, select query design, and in this case, we need the TBL customer. So I'm going to double click on the TBL customer, just increase the size here, and I'm going to double click all the options. Okay, so the criteria section, again, is below the checkbox. Here, I need to actually put my argument. Let's have a look what I need again. I need everything, how many customers live in the IO12 postcode area. Sort in ascending order. Uh, this is, do we have to sort? Yeah, sort to descending order. So I need to set up the descending order as well. I'm going to show you, in fact, I'll show you how to set up to the ascending order. And then you can actually apply the descending order on the previous query as well. The process is exactly the same. So I'm going to highlight this argument. I'm going to minimize this. And now I've got my query uh, structure here. On the postcode, on the, the, within the criteria section, I'm just going to paste the IO12, and then I'm going to put an asterisk. Now the asterisk, the multiplication icon, an asterisk represents anything after the IO12. So if I click here to run the query, I will be able to actually see 12 people live in IO12. It doesn't really matter what follows after the IO12, but I need to make sure that everything that is displayed is within the IO12. I didn't understand that. <laughs> okay, so Bixis is not that smart. Okay. On my phone. Okay, hopefully you understand exactly what I've explained. If you haven't, comment it below. All right. Now, that's how we create in uh, adding a wild card. This is what we call it. Let's go back to the design view. This is what we call uh, in the database queries an asterisk. An asterisk is a wild card. Now, there's lots of other wild cards as well that we're going to be using by creating queries. But one of the main wild cards that we use is the asterisk. So the next thing I need to do based on my PowerPoint presentation here, is I need to sort basically in ascending order. I need to sort that in ascending order based on the, I uh, have no, the, there's no specification here, based on the ascending order, based on the postcode. We can set the, the ascending order based on the customer's name as well. But I'm just gonna put here ascending order. So drop down the list and select ascending. That's how you apply ascending order or descending order. So if I run the query again, I can actually see that the three is before four and four is before six. So that's how I set it up to ascending order. If I want to set up to descending order, the six will come first. So if I drop down here the list and select descending order and run the query, I will have six, then four, then three. 
So that's the difference in between ascending order and descending order. Because everything is the same, it's checking the next value. The next value is the actual number. And based on this number, in this case, gives us the ascending or descending order. Okay, I'm going to name this query appropriately. So I'm going to right click here. That's another way to save it. I'm going to right click and select save. And I'm just going to call this QRY customers from IO12. It is important for you never to put spaces when you actually put in file names or queries or database tables or database reports. So click OK. So now if I have one of the customers is removed from the system and another customer actually have transferred to uh, this is because the data is deleted. OK, so if I refresh the page here, you can see here deleted, deleted. If I click here, refresh, this deleted record is gone. So if, say, for instance, I've got the customer called, you know, is basically moved to the IO12. And let's say this customer move also to IO12. So if I actually save this, there's another way to save it, the table and click here and I click on refresh I will be able to actually see all the new people that basically moved to the IO12 so every time I execute this query I will be able to see the current data based on the my query results and here I've got based on descending order I need to right click here select design view and change the order to ascending order Run my query. Okay, I've got two. Two comes before four. Four comes before six. Six comes before seven. I'm going to save this and exit the query. The next query we need to create, let's go to our PowerPoint presentation, is which stock item contains the term milk? Now, again, I need to use a wildcard here and also I need to set it up to descending order. Let's set up the descending order as well for the stock out of date. So let's go to the stock out of date. So expired design view. And for the best before date, I'm just going to change that to descending order. Run the query. OK, we're happy with that. Let's save it. OK, that's the descending order. OK. Now we are on third query, which stock items contains the term milk, and we still need to set it up as well to the descending order. So, so in order for me to, to do this, let's close this, I need to create a new query. It's going to be query design view. Now, because it's stock, I'm going to right click here and select show tables. Okay. This because I had the query selected. If you have a query selected and you go to create and then select query design, it's giving you the option only for the queries. So you need to basically select have the, the one of the tables basically selected. Alternatively, you just need to click here on the tables so you can actually see the tables. So I'm looking for stock, so I'm going to double click the term stock, TBL stock, and I'm going to double click on the ID, stock name, volume, double click on quantity, double click on best before date. And because I've got best before date twice, I'm just going to delete that. And delete that. Okay, place my mouse cursor here. I'm going to double click the cost per unit. I can actually click and drag to increase the width to display all the data. And we want the stock name to contain the term milk. Now, if I type the word milk here and run my query, nothing will come up. This is because none of the stock that I've got in place contains the term milk on its own. So here I've got the lights, dream. I think I've removed the milk before. So I should have a couple. Okay, I've got here milk. 
just gonna put here milk as well and I put here milk as well I put some extra stuff there just to show you that it doesn't really matter what you have because it contains the word milk it should extract the data from all from this query should extract still extract the data so I'm gonna to go to the design view and instead of actually just pure simple to say milk I'm gonna put some wildcards so I'm gonna put an asterisk then I'm gonna put milk and then I'm gonna put an asterisk now asterisk means anything before and anything after as long as it contains the word milk but is expecting to see to see something before and something after so I'm going to click run now and as you can see here I've got all the records which basically contain the term milk if I go through the stock table so I've got this record doesn't contain milk this record contains milk so this is my first record this record doesn't contain milk this contains milk this is the second record this one and this one doesn't contain the word milk but that one's the third one contains the word milk so now I will be able to actually save this query so I'm going to right click select save and I'm going to call this query QRY uh, uh, milk ice uh, ice cream uh, ice cream okay so I'm going to click OK okay the next thing I need to do is go back to the design view and change the order to I think set descending let's double check yep descending order okay so I'm gonna click Save my query is saved so I can close this and every time I want to check which ice cream if the customer asks me or somebody asks me which ice cream we have that basically contains milk I can double click here and I can actually see the exact ice cream that has milk for the super so for the people who are actually curious you know and they might start thinking yeah, yeah all the ice creams contain milk the answer is no no all the ice creams contain milk and some ice creams are made by different uh, ingredients okay so I'm just gonna close this query the next query we need to create let's go back to the PowerPoint presentation is low level of stock is below 200 which items of stock needs reordering due to low levels sort in ascending order now if I go here I'm going to create a new query I'm just before I click query I'm just going to click here on the table first so I have the table selected here okay the table selected here so again I'm looking for stock if I double click on the header and then click and drag here I will be able to also put all the fields uh, all at once into my query results okay so I need now for the stock level so quantity in stock I'm looking for all the goods that are less than 200 in stock yeah that's what my query states okay is below 200 so here I'm gonna put less than 200 and I'm gonna send this set the order set the order to ascending okay so I go here drop down the list select ascending order and then run my query so the only product that has less than 200 in stock quantity in stock is only the hazelnut dream so I'm gonna go to save this now and I'm just gonna call this QRY reorder click OK 
So in the future, if something, if a stock goes below the specific level, so let's say 150, let's make here 180. And if I double click on the reorder, I will be able to actually see now all the goods, all the products that have less than 200 in stock. The next query we need to create is which item or items cost per unit is greater than or equal to £2.50, sort in ascending order. So I'm going to go now to back to my query, back to my database. I'm going to create query, design. I'm going to select the tables. And I want again to uh, go to stock. And I need, what do I need again? I need the, uh, the cost for the item is equal or great, greater or equal to £2.50. So I'm just going to double click here and then click and drag to add all the parameters. Then cost per unit. I'm just going to say greater than or equals to and then £2.50. Going to run the query, and as you can see here, I've got a, a product that actually the cost is two pound fifty exactly. So this is the equals to. If I did not put the equals to, I only put the greater than two pound fifty. I will I won't be able to see the two pound fifty product. So it is important for me to understand this. So greater or equals to two pound fifty will give me all the products, including the products where the cost is £2.50. I'm going to change the order to, is it ascending or descending? Ascending. And then I'm going to save this query as QRY uh, products more than £2.50. Click OK. Now, if I do this, as you can see, a full stop will not be recognized. So I'm just going to put 2 hyphen 50. So this will give give the, a good understanding of people, you know, of what, what do we mean. Another thing that you could actually put is 2.50 in, in text, which will be a, a bit more ideal. So now if I actually right click here and select open, I will be able to see the products. Now, if sometimes we need to change the customers from IO, IO 12. Now, uh, sometimes we have to change the order instead of actually ascending order here. We might want to send in the, the change the order based on the customer's name or based on customer's surname or based base, basic uh, based on uh, customer title. Yeah. So I'm set it up to ascending order based on customer's name. So now I can actually see that Anna comes first, Ford comes second, Mohammed comes third, and then Paul comes fourth. This is how you're creating queries, and this is how you're extracting, converting data into meaningful information. Hope you learned something new today. Hope you will apply these new skills of yours into good to use. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.